Italian cooking where you see cooking from my point of view. Today, go away kitty. Um, today I wanted to do something where I kind of took some maybe like Americana type food, mix it with a little bit of Italian. Honestly, I wanted to play with my smoker. So what I did, I had a wonderful piece of pork and I thought, of course when you have pork, big old pork loin, you instantly think porchetta uh, if you're Italian. And then if you're, you know, southern and you like to barbecue, you think, oh, I'm going to put a nice spice rub on this and smoke it. So I did both. What I did is inside the pork loin is a very traditional porchetta. On the outside, I kind of did a, a, a southern rub, tweaked things a little bit. We let that rest, throw it in the smoker. You get the best of both worlds. Little Americana, little Italiana came together great. So let's take a look at those ingredients and get started. Now I'm going to warn you ahead of time, this video is a little bit longer. I tried to edit it down, but it is what it is. Here we go. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is our more traditional porchetta ingredients. Of course, we have a nice pork loin here. This is about a four pound pork loin. Um, we have a big bunch of sage, a whole bunch of rosemary, and some garlic. We're going to use olive oil. Now, this is something I normally don't do with my porchetta, but we're going to do a little prosciutto in it as well. Um, now, I'm going to warn you up front, I have too, mi too much rosemary and, and sage, but it's better to have too much than not enough. Now, a lot of times when I make porchetta, I'll just use a great big pork butt and just kind of cut some deep slices in it and then tie it up. So what I'm going to do with this porchetta is we're going to cut it right through the center. You can see this is kind of a thin one. If it were more round, what we would try to do is slice it and then roll it. But we're going to cut it right through the center, kind of butterfly it open, then rub all our seasonings in there, then flip it back over and tie it. So first step, we're just going to cut it right down the center. My wax paper tore on me here. So right like this. Try to cut it long way. You need a good sharp knife. Don't get in a hurry. Just keep following your line. Pull it open. It's not perfect, but you know what? We're gonna eat it anyway, it's just food. So I'm gonna break away real quick, wash my hands. I've moved stuff around and I have my, uh, my food processor out and ready to use. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in a handful of sage, a handful of rosemary, Try to do equal parts rosemary and sage best you can. And I'm gonna use all this garlic because I like a nice garlicky porchetta. We're gonna come in with our olive oil and do a pretty good dousing of olive oil. I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt and pepper and I don't have that here beside me so I'm gonna break away real quick and get that. So I've got my salt and my pepper. Let's do a couple quick grinds of pepper here. Sorry for the shaky camera. A little bit of salt. And we're just gonna keep pulsing this until everything's chopped up nice and uniform. Throw a little more see, olive oil in. I want more of a paste consistency, right, so I'm gonna leave. We got it now. Ah, oh, yeah, there's one or two big pieces in there, but you know what? Close enough for government work. So the next step, we're just gonna rub this paste, our rosemary, sage, garlic, salt, pepper paste. Now, I'm gonna say that a lot of folks, when they make a porchetta, they like to add fennel. I don't like the taste of fennel seed. I, I just don't like it, so I don't add it to my porchetta. But if you do, and you wanna add some fennel seed to this, you don't wanna go with equal parts fennel seed. I would just probably do, I don't know, maybe a fourth of the fennel seed that you do with the uh, rosemary and sage. But, you know, you've gotta, you, you know your palate. So just make it to your taste. Now it's gonna look like I have a lot of extra in here. And you know what, that's okay, because I love the flavor that this gives. I wanna get this down into all those nice little grooves. Add some prosciutto. We want a little bit of the saltiness from this prosciutto in the center, so all we're gonna do is kinda of just lay this in here. Then when we 
fold it all up. So what we're doing is we're putting a little bit of cured pork on our uncured pork to give it more porky flavor. My cat is meowing really loud because he's being a butthead, wants to go outside, but the neighbor cat picks on him, so we try not to let him out too much. At least I don't, because he's a rescue cat and he's been declawed. So, unfortunately the people that declawed him even removed his back claws, which is just not something that I've heard of. Not that I've had a ton of cats in my life that were declawed, but I've never heard of anybody removing their back claws. Look at that, prosciutto goodness. Now we're ready to close this bad boy up. Stuff that prosciutto in there. It's kind of like a nice prosciutto sandwich. Okay, now I gotta break away again and wash my hands. Then when we come back, we're gonna take our butcher's twine and put around this so we hold it all together, tie it up, then we'll work on our rub. I've cut off a really long piece of my butcher's twine. It's probably more than I'm gonna need. Um, unfortunately, this is sticking to my wax paper. So I'm just gonna have to sterilize my tabletop really, really well when I'm done here. Let's recenter. All right, so I'm just, don't want my guts to fall out, stuff them back up in. Just gonna kind of loosely put my butcher's twine around it. Kitty cat, be quiet. So, um, just like so, what I'm gonna do is I'll kind of pull this tight here in just a second. Pull this tight. Now on the ends, I really want it to be secured on the ends here. Now, uh, so I'll pull it back over here. I think I'm gonna have just enough to go around one more time on this end. Okay, look at that. It's not pretty, but I don't care because I'm not gonna, you know, I didn't put it together to look at, I put it together to eat. We're just going to tie it up, a quick knot. There it is. It's ugly, and it's mama dressed it funny, but it's good enough. Now I'm going to have to break away here. I'm going to put this on an aluminum pan, sterilize, then we're going to reset and talk about the rub that we're going to put on this. We're going to run through the ingredients for our dry rub, and then we'll give you the amounts as we're adding them to a, to a bowl. So we're going to have sugar, just regular old white sugar, Kosher salt, onion powder, basil, paprika, oregano, and garlic powder. Okay, I've got my lids off all my spices. First thing we're gonna add to our bowl is a cup of sugar. And this can be in about, so there's about a cup of sugar. Now I've got a big porchetta here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do for a cup and a half give or take. Where's my salt? We're going to need four teaspoons of salt. Next ingredient is three tablespoons of garlic powder. Three tablespoons of garlic powder. Next ingredient is three tablespoons of paprika. Next ingredient is two tablespoons of onion powder. The next ingredient is one tablespoon or one teaspoon, sorry, actually one and a half teaspoons of oregano and one and a half teaspoons of dried basil. The next step is just take a whisk, kind of break everything up, stir this until everything is pretty much ev evenly distributed throughout. Now what we're gonna do is get all of our spices out of the way, then we're gonna rub this pork, and it's gonna like it. The pork's gonna like being rubbed. We all like being rubbed. The next step is to apply it to the pork. Now we are gonna apply a very liberal amount, and then we're gonna wrap it up in plastic wrap, and we're gonna let it rest overnight in our refrigerator. Now, I'm not going to use all of this. I'm going to save some of it so that tomorrow, when I take it out of the plastic, I can make sure it's just slathered with this rub. Because really what's gonna happen is, you know, we've got a lot of sugar in there. Sugar melts under temperature, so it's gonna actually create a nice bark all over the outside of this. And that's what we want. We want that good bark. So all we're gonna do is just kind of spoon a little bit over that. You know what? 
we made way too much dry rub. So you can cut this by, you know, a third and you're still going to be really well off. So all we're going to do is just kind of massage this in all over this hunk of meat. Oh, hunk of, hunk of burning meat. I'll probably get sued over that, you know. You sounded like Elvis. You said a hunk of, hunk of burning meat. Um, there we go. We want to just press it all into that meat. Meat. My wife's over there. It's it's right before Christmas. Actually, it's not right before Christmas. It's right after Thanksgiving. And I've been recording a lot of episodes and really having fun cooking every day. Um, so we're trying to get all of our shopping done so we can get that part of the, the holidays behind us and be done with it. I use kosher salt for my rubs, and I think that's kind of important because regular old table salt will pull the moisture out of your meat, and you don't want that. There's not a lot of fat in a pork loin to begin with, so when you smoke it, it can dry out, um, especially if you don't know what you're doing, and I'm going to tell you up front, I don't know what I'm doing. I've smoked three things in my smoker um, ever. All right, I think our meat's happy. He looks relaxed. So what I'm gonna do is break away, wash my hands, and we'll wake him back up and then wrap him up in our plastic wrap. So you can't really see it here, but I have a piece of plastic laid out. Pull my pork loin over. I'm gonna lay it long ways, because I'm gonna wrap this five ways a Sunday. Um, that's a saying here in Southeastern Ohio, five ways of Sunday. Now, I don't live in Southeastern Ohio, but I'm from Southeastern Ohio, so every now and then you'll hear a a redneck saying come out of my mouth and I, I just can't help it that's just you know it's in my it's in my my DNA my redneck DNA so what I'm gonna do again is I want this to just slather around in this wonderful rub so you can see that I'm just gonna use all of it take our plastic wrap gonna pull it up over top now I'm gonna wrap this around too with some extra plastic wrap because we really want it to be tight in there we want it to just live in that rub. So now just kind of take our end, fold it up. Take this end, fold it up. I am going to take a piece of plastic and wrap it around this way, but I'm not going to bore you guys with that detail. This will go in the refrigerator overnight. Pork loin's been resting in the refrigerator overnight. If you remember, I had it all wrapped up in plastic. Get it out of your plastic, take it out, let it rest for an hour. So this has been setting out for an hour at the same time the smoker has been heating up for an hour. So all we're gonna do is take the remaining rub that we had and we're just gonna get a crust on this beast all over. We want a real heavy crust on it because what this crust is gonna do is turn into our bark. So as you can see, I'm using a whole bunch and probably too much, but that's okay. Try not to make a mess. Roll this piglet beast over. Set it right back in the crust. I'm gonna break away real quick, wash my hands, and then we'll get this side crusted. Okay, I'm set up outside by my smoker. Smoker's been warming up for an hour. It's uh, set at 225. We're gonna do a moist soak today, so I've got the water in. So let me get the door open. Okay, in the bottom, there's a water tray. I don't know if you can, how well you can see it down in there, but what you wanna do is boil water and fill that up. Again, we're doing a moist smoke. So I'm gonna get my pork loin here, set it right in on the tray. Heat probe goes in thick part. Some of our some of our wonderful uh, rub is falling off, but that's okay. It's got enough on there. So that's it, folks. Now we close the door, lock it up. Next step is we're gonna drop some chips in. On the master-built electric smoker, you load the chips here on the right-hand side. Today we're gonna use applewood chips. So I've got a pretty good load of chips in. We put them in, twist, that goes down on the heating element. Now, every half hour or so, we're gonna check, make sure we still have a good smoke coming out. We're gonna keep adding wood chips. Now we're gonna add probably progressively less as the time goes on. And 
then for probably the last 45 minutes to an hour we're not going to add any chips because the smoke's not going to get through that wonderful bark anyway so now let's take our messy tray back in get that all cleaned up and this is going to smoke at 225 degrees let's check our temperature we're at 225 degrees right now it's 180 because we had the door open it's going to smoke for 225 degrees for three to three and a half hours until the pork loin comes up to about 145 in the middle maybe a few degrees above that but not much because it will dry out all right so we're going to let that go until it's 145 then we'll be back it's been about three hours and 15 minutes our porchetta is done i checked the temperature on the meat probe we still got a little bit of smoke going so what i'm going to do is turn the unit off sorry if you hear a little bit of noise i am outside now i've got my tray here lined with foil because we're going to wrap this up we're going to talk more about that later all right let's let our smoke out Oh, ah, that's, whoo. Hopefully you can start to see that wonderful cut of meat in there. So what we're gonna do is, sorry, going out of frame. I'm gonna take out the meat probe, like so. Whoo. Try to get our spatula up underneath this. You can see it's got a wonderful crust on it. Oh my gosh, that crust. Now, we're gonna get this bad boy in the house real quick here. Okay, I'm back in the kitchen. You can see that thing has a wonderful crust. That sugar just melted. But before I talk too much, what we're gonna do is loosely wrap this in foil because if we cut it now, all of the liquid is gonna run right out of it. We don't want that to happen. But, so we, we want it to cool, but you don't want it to cool too quick. So we just kind of wrap it in foil, make a nice little tent, and that's gonna set for no less than a half hour. It's been about 45 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes. So it is time to take a look at our meat. Oh my gosh. Smells really, really, really good. Thing is beautiful. So what we're going to do is, sorry, move my camera a whole lot. I am going to cut me off a slab of this. Then we're going to taste it. You can see this. You can see the string in there. So I'm going to have to get the string off. But at any rate, we're going to get this thing ready. We're going to get it plated up, and then we will do a tasting. I plated up my smoked porchetta. Now I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna eat this on a bun. Um, you can't really see it from this angle, but there's a nice brown line in here. This is the prosciutto. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little bite of this to see how it turned out. And then I'm turning that camera off because I got a full dinner behind me waiting. And I'm gonna slap this sucker on a bun and eat it. Now that's a big old hunk right there, but let's give it a shot. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you can see this uh, wonderful crust that the smoker put on. Now, again, the reason there's so much of a crust there is because there was uh, really a lot of sugar in that um, in, our, in our rub. Mmm, it's good. Oh, son, you're gonna <laughs> love this. This is really freaking good. I'm really freaking hungry. So try this again. This is a very non-traditional porchetta. But if you have a smoker, it's definitely worth it because you get the best of both worlds. You're getting that traditional porchetta flavor with that nice southern smoked rub. So at any rate, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Most importantly, click that subscribe button on YouTube so you can see what I'm cooking and watch me screw up in the kitchen. Thanks for watching and ciao.